my name's Steve Elliott. We have Scott Converse and Dixon Dick, and uh, we are the uh, Dangerous Trio, and we're going to be leading you through a little bit on uh, technology. So, excellent, welcome, welcome. So, um, what we're up to today is um, we're going to try and introduce you to some technology. We don't want to get deep into this stuff, but what we do want to do is introduce you to things and give you the idea of what you can do with various technologies. You don't need to know how an internal combustion engine works in order to drive a car. You need to know what a car is good for. So as long as we can get you to maneuver the car around and figure out what it's good for, we will have accomplished our purpose here today. So. Um, this is all Sandy's fault. And Sandy started out by showing us this ad and said, this is what the kind of things we need to know. Hi, may I answer any questions? What the heck's the difference between all these phones? Windows or Android? What's LTE? Is it contagious? Which one fits my face? Do you make commission? No. Hmm. Which one has a touch screen? Which one has a touchy-feely screen? Is this considered touching? What's the cloud? Where is the cloud? Are we in the cloud now? How many megapixels does one person really need? What makes a smart TV so smart? Whoa, 3D. Whoa, what if I break it? Do you install? Do you deliver? Are these noise canceling? No, I mean, do you deliver? So what's the difference between an e-reader and a tablet? Between a tablet and this thing? Which one is the most vibratiest? Can this transfer all my pictures of puppies dressed up like hot dogs? Sure. Can I use a dongle with this? Does it make you uncomfortable to use the word dongle? Can I connect it to my TV? Can I connect these to my phone so I look dope when I call my peeps? You want to unbutton your shirt a little bit? Why am I so awesome? Hey, am I allowed in here? <laughs> I'll go. Will this one read Fifty Shades of Grey to me in a sexy voice? No. Will you? <laughs> okay. So, um, there were a lot of questions in there. And we need to know if you know the answers to all these questions. So get out your voting sticks, and we're going to go through each one of these. If you know all about this, show us the green side. If you have no idea what this means, show us the red side. And we'll get a, uh, get a, get a little sense of, of how people are doing here. So the first question is, what's the difference between all these phones? So everybody who knows everything there is to know about cell phones and know how they work, Show us the green side, everybody else red. Ooh, this is good. Okay. <laughs> How about, do you know the difference between Windows and Android? I got a few greens, okay, but still some reds. This is good. How about touch screens? You know how touch screens work? Ooh, lots of greens on that one. Great. How about the cloud? Who knows about the cloud? I got a, it worked. One more time. I think this is almost 50-50 here. Okay, this is good. How many megapixels does one person really need? <laughs> Who knows about megapixels? We got some, yeah, okay. And uh, how about smart TVs? Who knows what smart TVs are? Okay, a few, a few, this is good. Who knows about 3D? 3D screens, okay, let's raise them high, good. And how about noise canceling headphones? Ooh, lots of people, how many people have a noise canceling headphone? I see one, two, Kathy Bybee back there. <laughs> oh, we have some in the library, great, okay. And uh, what's the difference between an e-reader and a tablet? Everybody knows the difference. Library knows. <laughs> and uh, everybody who knows how to transfer all their pictures of puppies dressed up like hot dogs. <laughs> yeah, we get it. Okay. And dongles. Uh, okay. And who knows how to connect things up to your TV, like your iPhone or your, okay, all right. And uh, who knows how to connect things up to your phone? Add things onto the phone. Kind of a, was that a Masa Menos? Yeah, okay. <laughs> and who knows how to get your reader to read 
things to you out loud. <laughs> Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> so uh, let's let's see that one again. Okay, about 50-50 on that one too. All right. Okay, that was your voting sticks. You can lay those things down. So this is good. We, we have a bunch of folks who know some stuff, don't know other stuff. This is, this is excellent audience. All right. Well, let's see what we can do about all that. So um, we want to talk about, we'll, we'll start with uh, the phones. Does everybody remember the good old landline? Yeah. What's P-O-T? That's plain old telephone. <laughs> Yeah, and um, the, the good thing about that, when AT&T was making these phones, um, I, I was just watching an old movie, and somebody was smuggling stuff into the country in um, porcelain dolls, and how did they break open the porcelain dolls to get the diamonds out of the middle? They used the handset on the telephone <laughs> because those things were built to take tons of abuse. Um, so, the way that got into your house was <laughs> copper. There were copper wires getting into your house. That's all changing. So, the big thing right now for cell phones is cell phone towers. Did you know that's what those were? Okay, so those are the cell phone towers and they're disguising them these days. And also, churches are making big money by putting them up inside the steeples. And they, get, they rent them. To phone companies so they want elevation and they want the uh, towers up there so uh, that's how people are getting um, their phone service these days many of them and then we have lots of different smartphones which have all kinds of features on them and applications apps and that's what makes a smartphone a smartphone um, these guys here which are being phased out except they're still selling them when my aunt and uncle just bought one because they didn't like all the apps. All they want to do is call. All they want to do is get calls. And so that's called a feature phone. I think the only thing that it has as a feature other than being able to do phone calls. Oh, I see one back here. There we go. <laughs> and do you get text messages on yours? So that's the big exciting thing. You can get text messages camera and pictures, right? But not all the apps, not all, not all the little games, not all the little other things. So that's a feature phone. Um, the other way of getting phones uh, information is now called VoIP, Voice Over Internet Protocol. And so VoIP means that rather than having copper wires come into your house, you get it over your internet, whatever that might be, whether that's cable or, or whatever. And so that's going through the internet and I have VoIP at my house and nobody knows the difference. As far as quality, it's absolutely the same. So, um, any questions about that stuff? So that's Yes? So what okay, so the question is how do you connect a phone up to VoIP? Um, I just took my landline phone and unplugged it from the company that will not be named and plugged it into my little device that came out of my internet connection. And so that's, the, that's for the telephone in my house right and that was it it was just unplug it from the wall and plug it into the there's a little connector that goes to the to the internet so when when you buy it the first time you get the the little thing that i have is about this long and it plugs into the ethernet uh port on on your hub or your modem that's coming in and plug and it comes out and plugs right into your phone and that's it it's easy <laughs> you also can do it on your computers, so there are apps on your phones that do it as well. So anything that is connected to the internet can also be used as a phone, period. 
pretty much. And all you need with your, if you have a laptop, you can turn it into a phone very easily. All it needs is a microphone, which all of them have now, and um, uh, an internet connection. Some of them also, if you have a camera on it, works the same way. That's what Skype is. Skype, as you know, is free now. Microsoft owns it. And uh, Hangouts is from Google, and um, Google obviously owns that. And you can do all the same things. You can call a regular phone from your computer. You can have a regular phone call your computer. So VoIP is everywhere. And it really is. It's what fiber is going to be based on as well. So everything that LPC is doing, the phone service they're going to provide, it's all VoIP. So very high quality, um, very trustworthy now. And it used to not be that way. It's only over the last three or four years it's gotten really, really good. And one of the things that makes it good quality is speed. So if you have fiber optic, that's what makes really good quality. When Scott said it was untrustworthy a few years ago, that's because the internet speeds were slower. So, um, I'm gonna give this one back to Scott because he has a wonderful analogy of how operating systems, what, what those things are. Do you remember that analogy? The, the hotel. hotel? The hotel, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we were gonna change this one, but. Windows or Android or iOS, because I know that you guys have a lot of Win, um, uh, Apple products and in the city. So really, um, an operating system is what this means. Do you all know what an operating system is? Because what it really is, is it, if you look at the computer, that's your hotel, and the operating system works a lot like a staff in the hotel. So if you were thinking about an analogy, that's what an operating system does. So the differences between Windows and Android and iOS are pretty minimal. They're mostly interface. Most of them now are based on uh, a form of Linux or Unix. Even Windows is moving in that direction and has licensed a whole bunch of different Linux and Unix functions, and they've built that into the newer versions of Windows. Windows 10 does all kinds of stuff behind the scene, so that uh, is very, very similar to, to what Apple does and what um, Android does. So they're really kind of converging. The primary difference is going to be the interface and the ecosystem that is available, meaning the number of apps and the other fun stuff that you can do in those operating systems. So, very simple. Um, and uh, they now are going across all apps. As you can see, we've got computers up here, we've got cell phones, and we've got tablets, and pretty much the same operating system can work on all of them. Uh, Windows will work across your phone, across your tablet, and across your PC. iOS uh, works seamlessly with a Macintosh, even though they're different operating systems now. So they've made it so they all work together very closely. And um, Android works the same way with all of Google's online services. It's extremely seamless. If you have a Google account and you have an Android device, you just plug in your ID and password and everything is instantly transferred regardless of what you're using. And you're starting to see Android show up on PCs. I've got actually, we have afterwards, we're going to demo some stuff for you. And I have one here that is an Android PC. Also happens to be a phone and a tablet. So mm -hmm. a lot of really interesting stuff happening. Any other questions about operating systems and what kind of things? It used to be that it was a real problem if you had one operating system and somebody else had something else and you were trying to transfer things back and forth. But nowadays, not a big deal. And you can share files with just about anybody, no matter which operating system you started from. Just pick one and go with it. Yep. <laughs> The question was, she has an Apple phone and it comes with the Apple operating system. Um, I happen to have a Motorola one here. This one came with Android, right? And when you turn them on, you're going to, uh, whoops, I, told, I shouldn't have called that person. Um, <laughs> but I have the app sitting on the front of it just like you have on the front of yours. And they're going to work the same way by touching those apps and uh, moving things around. Yeah, the question is, uh, what, what determines what operating system is on what phones? And um, the answer is, contracts and negotiations done between the companies that are making the phones and the people who want to get operating systems on them and all that kind of thing. So it's all just corporate manipulations behind the scenes and you buy this phone because you like this phone and you're going to get that operating system on it. So, yes ma'am. Will an app from iOS trans 
transfer to my Android? No, but most people are going to write the app so it'll work on several different operating systems. And you go to different places to get the apps that work on your phone. So you always go to Apple for your iPhone stuff. And if you have a uh, Android, which is Google, you go to the Google store for apps to, to get those. You just got to get the right app for the right operating system. That's probably one of the most, um, one of the things you need to remember is I've got this operating system. This is where I go to get the apps. The data is interchangeable. Data, back and forth. You got a picture, doesn't care what operating system it came on. You want to do a, a text word or uh, Excel spreadsheets, doesn't make much difference. You can pass that data back and forth. So it, that wasn't the case as few as five years ago. And it's really come a long ways now. All right, so we got all kinds of ways to connect things up. Um, if you are familiar with these little wires over here, these are ethernet wires and they're very fast and they're great if you've got a building that you've got things wired up to and you wanna connect your computer up to the internet, ethernet is the way to go. And uh, always a strong connection and uh, not given to blackouts, burnouts, or any of that kind of stuff. Um, if you want to do this all without wires, you go to Wi-Fi. So your internet connection comes into your house, however it gets there, and through an ethernet cable, you connect it to your Wi-Fi transponder because it goes both ways, and that will go wirelessly to your devices. So one thing, if you have a um, smartphone, there's two ways to get data on, uh, onto your phone. One is to have it to come over the cell phone tower, boink, which is going to be expensive because the cell phone company is going to charge you per minute. And the cheaper way is to go over Wi-Fi, which is less expensive to get your data. Now this is data. If, if you're going to talk on the phone and call somebody on the phone, you're always going to go through the cell phone tower. If you're going to download things, games, apps, whatever, uh, if possible, you want to hook it up so that it works through Wi-Fi because that's usually cheaper. Okay, so cell phones, Wi-Fi. Um, then we have this business here, which is tethered, which is if you have something that only operates via Wi-Fi, you can use your cell phone to get stuff off of the cell phone tower and then it can become a little Wi-Fi transponder to talk to somebody else. So if you have a, um, a flat screen little um, laptop or something like that that is, is not connected to the phone cell towers, you can use a smartphone as an in-between to get stuff off the cell phone tower and transmit via Wi-Fi. That's, so, that's a hotspot. Excellent. Good question. And uh, since we're all, many of us, librarians, I'll tell you where we had to use this. Um, the Friends of the Longmont Library has a book sale, right? And in the library, lots of good Wi-Fi and it was working great. We when we have our big book sale, some of it's over in the Civic Center, and where we were sitting in the Civic Center, no Wi-Fi. But we whipped out a cell phone and hooked it up and made it a hotspot, and we were able to use the cell phone as the intermediary to go to our iPad so we could swipe credit cards and sell books. So it became a hotspot there. So that's a... All right, last thing on the item is Bluetooth. Bluetooth is another radio wave, no wires. And the cool thing about Bluetooth is a, a little bit called pairing. So you pair, and this example here is an earphone headset, microphone and, and little earpiece, with your smartphone. And those things are now attached to each other 
and nobody else is supposed to be able to break in on your connection. All right? And it works for about 30 feet. It's a fairly close thing. Oh, I forgot to mention um, Wi-Fi. How far does Wi-Fi go? 100 feet? 150. 150. House size. Think house. You know, it, it'll, it'll cover a house. Bluetooth, a little bit closer, about 30 feet. But once you get things paired, you're on. So um, I think that's about it on those. Any other questions? So this is how you hook things up. All right. Now, most of the people here knew all about touch screens, right? So the nice thing is you just poke, you point. Uh, almost every smartphone these days is a touch screen. So you can get in there. And then there are various flavors of touch screen. Can it handle one touch, just poke? Or can it handle two fingers so you can zoom in and shrink? Or can it handle three, four, five? You know? And some of the touch screens are great. If you put three fingers on it, now you can rotate the whole picture around, do all kinds of stuff. So when you're looking at touch screens, you just want to play with it a little bit and make sure it does the things you want. So. Ah, the cloud, the mysterious cloud. You want to talk about this, Dixon? Sure. Dixon likes cloud. <laughs> <laughs> Are we in the cloud? I love the way she said that. Are we in the cloud? <laughs> well, yes. Um, cloud is mostly captured um, when you want to say, I'd love to share a Google Doc with you. People can quickly understand that uh, I'm going to send a document to you and it's going to be online in the Google service. And so somewhere on some server in some place, that's why they call it the cloud. It's kind of foggy out there. We don't know where it is. They're going to store that document and they're going to have an address for it. And as long as you give somebody the address, you can find that item of information amongst all of the other documents that are in the cloud. Your email also is in the cloud. I want to send an email to somebody. It's stored on a server that forwards to another server that forwards to another server, and I don't know where that is. So these are cloud storage uh, items. So nowadays, uh, when you, for example, use an app that's going to have, um, say, the camera on it, uh, uh, at the risk of, of sounding like a lawyer, I'm not. <laughs> You uh, might take it, for example, for evidence, which is this is the particular graffiti I found in a particular place. Or I found a particular document, for example, in a library. I've never seen this. I don't know where it goes. I'm going to take a picture of it so I can remember where it goes. These automatically upload to the cloud. I happen to love that feature on Google+. So when, for example, I'm writing on a whiteboard, I'll take a picture of the whiteboard that we had a conversation about, and it immediately uploads to the cloud. And then I can share that from the cloud uh, with other people. What clouds have done is, the neat part is that I do it on my phone, but then my PC my, or my laptop has access to the cloud. I never transferred it to my laptop. I didn't have to. It's in the cloud. So I go to my laptop and I say, picture, boom, there it is. Then I can download it and I can show it to other people. Or like I also said, I can share it with other people. So that's what it means when it says any device. It can be your laptop, it can be your iPad, it can be your, even your feature phones. And it can also, uh, you can also access that from anywhere. So cloud storage, very, very handy. Very, very fast way of uh, letting people know what you're seeing. So for instance, this slideshow that we put together, I put it together, I stick it on the cloud, I send these two guys a link that says, here's my current version of the slideshow, what do you think of it? And their computers, doesn't make any difference what operating system they are, whatever they're doing, they can look at it and they can go through and play with it and say, are you kidding me? <laughs> Slide number 24? No way. <laughs> so, but we're doing all that through the cloud. And the cloudy part is that, as Dixon said, it could be on any computer anywhere. It could be in Portland. It can be in Puerto Rico. We don't know. And we don't care. Question. So the question is, um, there seem to be various different kinds of clouds. Some are free, some are pay, um, that sort of thing. So, and some of them entice you to getting in there because they give you a little bit free. And then when you go over the limit, 
oh, they want you to pay money every month now uh, to keep stuff on their cloud. And there are a bunch. Uh, it's virtually anybody who has a little bit of extra disk space who thinks they can make a little money at it. So, for instance, I signed up for Adobe, right, because I use their software all the time, and the next thing I know, they're trying to sell me cloud space to save all my images there. Microsoft has one. Google has one. Um, there's some called Dropbox. What else we got? Box. Yeah, Box. Amazon Prime is now selling cloud services. So any large organization that has big disk drives where they can store a lot of information, they're going, why not sell the services as the cloud? So. And this is an important point. You are asking about free versus paid. If it's free, you're the product. Does that make sense? Yep, that's why. So have you noticed there's ads and everything? So, and your data is fair game, meaning the way you use it, the way um, you distribute uh, information, everything you're doing is being watched and it's being put through data processing to figure out how can we sell more stuff to this person. So if it's free, you're the product. If you're paying for it, you're probably not the product. So that's one of the main distinctions between all free and paid services. So for instance, I did some online searching for robot parts. And the next time I started getting into Google, over on the right side, I started noticing ads for robot parts. So Google's keeping an eye on you for your free cloud service. And they're trying to sell you stuff. So yeah. Oop. So, how many megapixels does one person need? <laughs> so, first question is, what's a pixel? And a pixel is one block of information. If you look at this image over here on the left, there are 15 pixels high and 12 pixels across. So, it's one block of information. And as you see, as we go to the right, we have more pixels. They become smaller, and our image becomes clearer. But it takes a lot more information to give you a clear image than it does to see this little blocky image. So cameras, when you go to buy them, the thing that they are touting is, I got 5, 10, 12, 20, 30 megapixels. So it's how many dots of information are on each picture that I take. And the more dots, the better, as far as clarity. Also, it's going to take a lot more room on storage on your disk drive to save those images. Make sense? So. What's all this stuff about megas and gigas and gagas and Google pictures and Google plexes and Google? All right. So um, a bit is one thing, and it's either on or off. Yes or no, one or zero. And that's a bit. And then we go to the next unit that a computer operates with, and that's called a byte. And a byte is 8 bits, and those things are on or off. So now we get into math. 2 to the 8th, if you have 8 possibilities of on or off, and there's only 2 ways that it can be on or off, but you got 8 of them, that gives you the possibility of having 256 different ways that you can configure those on and off guys. I should do my little demo. Hold this for a second. Here we have a three-bit operating system. <laughs> See the three bits? And it turns out what, that there are two ways that each of these valves can be. This one needs a little oil. <laughs> so they can be on, off, 
or on, right? And so now how many options do we have for ways that we could do this? One, two, get back up there, three, four, this is really slow, five, six, which one did I miss? Did I get seven and eight? Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Eight options <laughs> out of three vowels. And so that's how this stuff works. Now, if I only had eight fingers, I could do 256 notes to a scale. <laughs> All right? So bytes are useful. Boink. Come on. There we go. And we go back to how much information can you move back and forth at any one time, or how much information can you store on your computer. And we start using terms like kilobits and megabits and gigabits. So nobody talks kilobits anymore. That's 1,000 bits. Now we're talking about megabits, millions, and gigabits, billions. So when you go to buy a computer, it's going to tell you how many gigabits or bytes, you have to divide by eight, are going to be available on your computer at any one time. And then there's the gigabit. <laughs> All right. <laughs> And speed comparisons. Now, we are about to become the gigabit city. The fiber optic system that's going to be installed here is going to be able to send a gigabit per second. And the difference is with, and this is my numbers. Um, I used to have Comcast. And I was getting 15 megabits per second. And to download the movie Captain America from Amazon Prime took 41.58 minutes. Then Longmont Power and Communications installed the gigabit at my house. And now I can do a gigabit. And the same movie takes 37 seconds to download. That's the difference. OK. Let's see if I do, 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 do. So Scott found this wonderful little video here. So data coming into your house. Trickle, trickle, trickle. Four megabits. Woo, pretty exciting, huh? Ooh, 15 megabits. This is what Comcast is currently offering for houses. 50 megabits. Whoa, ho. So now we get the Captain America movie at one gigabit. <laughs> get the idea? <laughs> Yeah, and that's, that's the difference. That's what we're looking at. And that's why people are so excited. Did we mention that the fiber optic system is cheaper than Comcast? <laughs> Questions? How much cheaper? No. <laughs> OK. Um, so now we have smart TVs. So what is a smart TV? That's a TV that has a computer in it so that it can run apps. And the computer doesn't have to be big. As we know, you can run apps on a cell phone. So normally what it's doing is getting things like Netflix so that you can connect through Wi-Fi usually or an Ethernet cable and you can download movies and you can download all kinds of things that are now available via the internet and watch them on your big TV screen. So that's what smart TVs are all about. And uh, I see one of my favorites on here, Ted. How many people watch Ted 
events. If you don't, check it out. TED events are good ideas that people have, and they're usually less than 20 minutes, and people get a chance to get up on stage and say, this is my good idea for saving the world, or doing this, or creating this, or whatever's going on, and it'll really get you thinking. So, TED, TED.com. And they have lots of these videos that uh, you can get over the internet. And you're, there's a little app right there. You click on that app, and you can start scrolling through the menus and seeing what kind of things TED has to offer. Or YouTube, or there's lots of kids' programs, whatever. So those are all apps that these companies created so you can watch the stuff on your TV via the internet. We loved it when, in the commercial that we watched with Amy Poehler, she's going, 3D, whoa, 3D, whoa. So everybody's been to the movie theaters and put on the glasses and seen a 3D movie. And then they started trying to sell 3D TVs to, to everybody at the stores. And it's kind of not working <laughs> because, um, one of the things is you got to have the glasses, and, they, and if you wear glasses, then you got to put their glasses on over your glasses. And if anybody sits on your pair of glasses, then you're out of it, right? And uh, so these people right here are obviously enjoying themselves sitting there with their fancy, fashionable glasses watching 3D movies. Um, but we haven't seen it really take off. So for home use, um, theaters seem, seem to be doing okay. Ooh, all right, so the library has noise canceling headphones. How do they work? I got, I got the, uh, the shrug here, right? So this is actually good fun. So there's two signals that are coming into the headphones. One is the signal that you plugged into the computer so you can hear the music or watch the video and do all that. So that's coming in the line through um, from the computer and going into the headphones. There's another signal that's coming in and that's picked up by a microphone on the headphones. <clears throat> and that signal is what we call noise. Now, nobody's been paying any attention here, but has anybody been able to hear the air conditioning system in this room? That's noise. All right, so when you have a set of headphones, they're getting part of the information from your computer, but here's the little microphone that's getting the noise. And the clever scientific thing that happens, the engineering part to cancel out that noise is, okay, here we go for math. What's plus one and minus one? Zero. What's plus four and minus four? Zero. What's plus 392 and minus 392? Zero. Zero. So what we do is we take the signal that's coming in from the external sound and we take half of it and flip it. So everything that's positive becomes negative. And then we average them together. What's the average? Zero. So it takes that noise that's coming in from the microphone and cancels it out. So we, after we finish here, we've got a set of noise canceling headphones in the back and you can put them on and when you turn the switch on that turns on the microphone and turns this little clever circuit on, you'll hear the air conditioning in this room just disappear. It won't disappear entirely, but it'll really cut it down. The best place to use these is on airplanes. It is wonderful. And it astonishes me when I'm on an airplane with my headphones and the, somebody comes by and wants to know if I want more coffee and I pull the headphone out to answer them and it's like, whoa, there's a jet here. <laughs> and it's really nice to have those on and have it quiet out the jet noise. So that's what noise canceling headphones are all about. Okay, all I have to do is find the closest librarian and say, what's the difference between an e-reader and a tablet? 
Who knows the difference? Scott knows the difference. You want to tell us the difference? Yes. <laughs> um, one is dedicated and one's not. Pretty simple. I mean, you can have an e-reader on your tablet. Like I have Kindle reader on my iPad, right? But I can also have a Kindle, which is effectively a hardware-based app. That's how I look at it. This thing is, this thing is an app, a single-use app for reading and just for reading. And it's quite brilliant, actually. They, I love the Kindles. They're awesome. Um, but that's really all that they do. Uh, if you want to have a lot more flexibility, it's better to go with a tablet. And but we're it, talking about battery life. Two things. One is um, generally the Kindles are Wi-Fi only, although you can get a 3G version that doesn't have a cellular fee with it, which is interesting. But they're a lot more expensive. Uh, but they have multiple months of battery life usually two to three months for a charge. Not so, obviously, with a tablet. You'll get a day, maybe maybe a day and a half. Yeah. Questions on that? OK. So <laughs> how do I transfer all of my stuff from my phone? I just took a wonderful picture of a doggy dressed up like a hot dog. Now, how do I get that stuff transferred? And there are several ways you can do that. We already talked about the cloud. You put the picture up in the cloud and no matter where it came from, whether it's your phone or your computer or a camera, it's sitting up in the cloud and anybody else can copy it, move it, view it um, on their device. Um, the other way, of course, is to actually plug things in, plug a wire from your phone to your computer and copy the things in there. So. We didn't talk about USB connections, right? What's USB stand for? Universal Serial Bus. Universal Serial Bus. And so there are lots of different USB connectors to connect different devices to computers. And it can be printers, and it can be phones, and it can be whatever you want to do. So those are the wires that do those connections. And so the nice thing is you can share your picture. You can email your picture. You can put your picture up on Facebook and everybody can see it up there. So it's pretty easy these days to share information. Whether it's useful information like doggies dressed up like hot dogs or perhaps even a spreadsheet <laughs> with some numbers on it that somebody else might want to read. Okay, dongles. I didn't see too many green things when you're talking about dongles, so I'm going to whip out my dongle here. Um, this is a dongle. All right, and a dongle is some piece of hardware that will plug into either a computer or a phone or a tablet that gives you extra features. Now, this one is called the Google Chromecast dongle. And you can plug it into a everyday, normal, run-of-the-mill television, and it turns it into a smart TV. And it allows you to run the apps. Okay? So, and I also have on my laptop here, I've got a little tiny dongle. It's about that big, and it plugs into my laptop, and it gives me a wireless mouse. So that's another little feature that I get by plugging a piece of hardware into my laptop in this case, or into a TV with the Google Chrome, and I get more features. So that's a dongle. Um, in the good old days, if you, did, if you had a computer that did not have Wi-Fi, you could plug a dongle in, and it would hook it up to Wi-Fi. Uh, this one down here lets you uh, hook up two external speakers with good old RCA plugs. Questions on dongles? Yes, ma'am. Price range on dongles. What is this guy? It's like 35 bucks. Depends on the features and what you're getting. Um, when I bought the wireless mouse and keyboard, that was, you know, 50 bucks and it came with the dongle. 
you know it's it's not a usually not a very big deal okay you look like you want to say something okay yes question is this one here that goes from a USB to a speaker no big deal what's the deal and the answer is it's not a big deal and I'm willing to bet this thing is less than five bucks not that one? No. Okay. Dixon knows more than I do. <laughs> this particular one, if you look at it, you're getting an analog signal into it, but then you get a digital signal into the computer. There is a converter in it. Right. So the converter is, you're right, it's probably less than, you know, 10 bucks or something like that. But it is, technically, it's still a dongle because it's doing something that's a feature that you couldn't do. They're all kind of converters. Right. When, when you have a converter or it's doing something, that's what we mean by a dongle. Um, like if it was a splitter like you were talking about, it's still an analog sp splitter, that's not a dongle. It's just a simple splitter. So there is a difference and that's a good point that you make. So it's kind of, think of it as a form factor, right? It's a thing that can be plugged into a computer or a television, a tablet, a phone that does more than what that thing initially did. The Chromecast up here, that actually has a Linux server and a computer in it and two gigs of RAM, and it is a full-blown system. But with it, you can turn your TV, you basically have a computer that you plug into your TV and turn it into a smart TV. I mean, it's phenomenal what they can do for 35 bucks, and you can bet that, com that Google is <coughs> losing a few bucks in each one of these sell, that they sell. Why? You're the product. <laughs> They're tracking everything you do with that Chromecast. All the guys do. They all do it. That's why this stuff's so cheap. <coughs> One of the things I noticed, I, I was playing with the Chromecast, and I found one of these old, um, you know, channels, and I was watching all these old black and white movies. I was big into Peter Gunn for a while, right, and watching all those. And the next thing I know, Google is starting to shoot me information about how I can join the Peter Gunn fan club, you know? <laughs> so, Scott's right. You are the product. They're tracking what you're watching, and they're using it to sell you stuff. It's anonymized. Pardon? It's anonymized. anonymized. We need to anonymize myself. Yes. And there are ways to do this. Susan will tell you this. That's a different class. That's a different class. Or pay Susan. <laughs> and she'll tell you how. All right. So we looked at the dongles you can connect to your regular TV and make it into a smart TV. But you can connect almost anything into your TV. I have here, and this is a wonderful little connecting device right here, which is known as the HDMI cable, high definition media interface, multimedia interface. Sure. And, uh, so this one happens to have HDMI regular thing on this end, and on this end is an itty bitty teeny weeny one that plugs into my cell phone. And so I can take anything off my cell phone, pictures, whatever, and shoot them up onto the big screen. So you can connect almost anything to anything these days. And it's easy, and it's slick, and it works. Uh, the, the question is, does that work with a feature phone? And the, and the answer is there's not many features on that phone <laughs> that translate into TV. Uh, photos. photos. But I don't know that your feature phone has an HDMI port on it. No, probably not. So and I, I would say you're going to get to a smartphone before they're willing to send all that stuff out. Yes, ma'am. Do all TVs have a place? All of, all of the newer flat screens do, yes. Um, and uh, the newer monitors, the flat screen monitors for computers usually have an HDMI input also now. So they're be all becoming kind of blurry, you know. Um, I have a flat screen on my computer at home and that's what I was using to plug the dongle into to make it a smart TV. So it was actually a computer monitor, right? But I was using it as a TV. 
So, yeah. We love this little application over here. Can I connect it to my phone? And, <laughs> and yes, you can connect all kinds of stuff to your phone. Uh, one of the things that I love now is you can connect credit card readers to a phone and plug it in the top of the phone and there's a little app, right? And you say, I wanna charge you $25 to do this. Swipe your card and usually hand the phone to the person and they sign with their finger and it never looks like their signature, right? But you can do that kind of stuff with things that you can plug into the phone. So there's all kinds of wonderful little things now that plug into phones, including handsets. <laughs> and uh, I also like the uh, wooden case, a little retro for the uh, advanced technology. And uh, so we're getting to the last thing that was the question that Amy asked on her ad, which was, will this read Fifty Shades of Grey to me in a sexy voice? Now there is now an app available from Amazon that tracks where you're reading in the book and you can switch back and forth between reading it in text or having it read it to you out loud, which is a wonderful thing. Um, you just need to be a little bit careful about when you do this. Nose and the nose, and know which one's your nose and which one's your okays. He lifted me to my feet then and bent his head to kiss me. It went on a long while, and his hands roamed downward, finding the fastening of my petticoat. <laughs> you just have to be careful, <laughs> especially with Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> especially with Fifty Shades of Grey. So, that was our little introduction to a little bit of technology. How'd we do? Get a little bit? All right. <laughs> so, um, any more questions? We kind of looking for other stuff. Um, here at Tinker Mill, we're, we're developing these kinds of classes for both city employees and the public. We got one other one in the works now, which is going to be the how do you hook up to fiber optics? What are you gonna need? What hardware are you gonna need? What are you gonna have to do at your house? What, what's it gonna mean for you? What does it look like? All that kind of stuff. So that one's in the works, but we're looking for other ideas for things that you may want to know about. Are there any other cities around the country doing what we're doing? And then is this like what Boulder just voted on? So. The answer is one other city is doing a true fiber network. Now there are about 212 cities that have got high speed internet that they're providing to their um, population, but there's only one other city that's doing true gigabit to the wall of your house, fiber running right up to the wall, and that's Chattanooga, Tennessee. So what the other cities in Colorado did in this last election was seven of them actually voted to approve a, munici a municipal network. And Colorado is one of the only states, there are 50 states in the union, 20 of them have laws that stop cities from doing this. You can't do it at all, 20 states. And that you can thank Comcast and CenturyLink and those guys for that because they bought some local senators and got these laws passed. Colorado put a loophole in which was if you can get a majority of the people in your city to vote for it, you can have it. But that's quite the, the chore to go through. The good news is it kind of commits your city to at least trying to do it. So we have seven other cities now in Colorado uh, that have voted that they want to do it, Boulder being one of them. But we are, how many years ahead? When did we decide? 1999 that we wanted to do this? So we are at least five, and I'm going to guess more like eight to ten years ahead of every other city in, in Colorado. And I also am going to bet you, if you look around, you've got Louisville, Lafayette, Frederick, Erie, Boulder, um, Lyons, Fort Collins, Greeley, Loveland, we're right at the center of all of it. The only thing keeping us from being the, the gigabit region is that law. And that law is about to be thrown out by the FCC. And once that happens, I'm going to bet you that Longmont becomes the center of a data haven like you've never seen. This place is good. Longmont's going to be amazing just with its own gigabit, but 
Five years from now, we're going to be at the center of an area that is going to have advanced manufacturing that will blow your mind. And it's, you know, educational things going on because we have five universities within a 30-minute drive of this place. I mean, we're right in the middle of it all. Longmont's the hub. I mean, this is where the action's going to be. It's actually where the action's at now, starting November 3rd, when we started selling Gigabit. You guys have got tons of technologies in your life. You just don't really know it, and you don't really know what they'll do. That phone, that smartphone you've got, will do an amazing array of things. We could do a four-hour course on your smartphone, on, your, on just your Android phone, and then another one on just your Windows phone, or another one on just your iOS device. So, great. Well, thank you very much for coming. We've got some toys back there to look at. Yeah, back on the back table, when we're done right here, we'll come back and show you some of these things and show you, show you what this stuff is all about so you can actually touch things. Make sure you put on the headphones.